Hello and welcome to the France 24 interview. Today we are joined by Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Mr. Prime Minister, thank you very much for having us in your office in Jerusalem. Well, my pleasure. Now, last week you struck a defiant tone on Iran at the UN General Assembly and it stood in sharp contrast with what, what, with what could be called the warm reception that some countries, some of your allies even, gave the new Iranian president, Hassan Rouhani. For instance, the French president, François Hollande, shook hands in front of cameras with the new Iranian president. How did you react to that, to that handshake, and did you think he was being naive in doing so? Oh, I don't think President Hollande is naive at all. I think he understands what the issues are. And the issue is, the critical issue is to prevent Iran from having nuclear weapons capability. See, what I I Iran is effectively happy, uh, putting forward with the smile campaign of Rouhani is an old position. We can retain enrichment, that is centrifuges to enrich uranium. We can retain our heavy water plutonium reactor. These are not needed for civilian nuclear energy. That they can have, even though they have gas and oil for generation. But they need the enrichment, the centrifuges and the heavy water plutonium reactor for one thing, to produce nuclear weapons. We don't want to give them that. You're saying that Hassan Rouhani is bluffing, that he should not be trusted. Why don't you... I'm not saying that. He's openly saying that. He's saying, he's saying, why don't I trust him? Because call him an honest deceiver. Here's what he said in 2005. He says, a country that can enrich, enrich uranium to about 3.5% will also have the capacity to enrich it to about 90%. That's what you need for weapons. He said, having this capability effectively mean, means that a country is able to produce nuclear weapons. Your goal is to expose his bluff. There would be one way, perhaps, of doing that, a simple way. Pick up your phone, dial his number. That would be one way of putting his openness or his readiness to real change dialogue to the test. Why Maybe. haven't you done that? Maybe. I don't think that's an issue. You don't normally call somebody who openly calls for your annihilation. I mean, you, you, you do have uh, uh, a simple proposition, though, that I would put forward. Look, if, uh, if they wanted, really, to, uh, uh, to uh, dismantle their program, their nuclear weapons program, they'd come out with it. Suppose Assad came to the West that was threatening uh, the United States, uh, threatening uh, military strikes on him, and he said, you know what? I have a proposal. He'll smile while he's saying that. I'll, uh, I'll take 20% of my chemical weapons away. Would you accept that? Would anyone accept that? Of course not. France, by the way, was very tough on this. Very tough. Just as it was tough on Mali. Now it should be tough on... Iran too, with or without Rouhani's smile. You dismantle everything. You don't dismantle 20%, you dismantle 100%. This is not my position alone. This was the French position, the EU position, the P5 plus 1 position. These are the Security Council resolutions. Iran should dismantle completely its enrichment capabilities and its heavy water reactor because that is what produces nuclear weapons. Despite that, um, you do sound today like a lone voice on Iran. Are you not afraid, uh, through being the only one who's crying out wolf while others seem to be seeing nothing but sheep around Rouhani, that uh, you have put your country in a difficult position, isolated, perhaps with its back to the wall, and not close allies who are in the exact oh, same wavelength not, of you? Because we're not towing the line? Oh, I know they're towing the line. People uh, applauded the... Uh, agreement with uh, North Korea. They said diplomacy worked. I have nothing against diplomacy if it works. But diplomacy that doesn't work, we should all call it like it is. Everybody celebrated the North Korean deal. Uh, and then a year later, uh, North Korea exploded its, uh, its nuclear device. You know, I was uh, uh, supposedly a lone voice when the Arab Spring broke out. And I said, look, I think it may very well lead to the an Islamist uh, uh, dictatorial tide. And unfortunately, it happened. So I'm, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I don't have any problem telling the truth, even if it's not popular. It so happens that I'm not isolated. Israel is not isolated. Just about every country in the Arab world agrees with our position. Some say so openly, some say that less openly. Oh, there's one country that doesn't agree with it. You know who that is? Syria, the Assad, of course. Because he supports Iran's regime that continues to help him in the mass murder of women and children. So this regime that participates in this mass slaughter in Syria, that makes it possible, they're propping up Assad, that is uh, practicing terrorism uh, in uh, five continents, in 25 cities in the last three years alone, that has violated every UN Security Council resolution to stop enrichment, 
This regime now is smiling and coming and saying, you know what, let me keep enrichment. Let me keep my uh, plutonium reactors and I'll make some tactical, some cosmetic concessions. You reduce the sanctions. You reduce the sanctions, the sanctions can collapse. So they'll get everything and we, our collective, we get nothing. If it falls on me to say something that everybody understands, well, I'll say it. When, when expression... And don't say, I didn't warn you, either. <laughs> don't say, I didn't warn you. One expression that we're not hearing as often from you on Iran is red lines. And we did hear a lot of deadlines from you. Some of them have been pushed back in time. So some are now considering that you're bluffing on this whole thing of Israel being ready for a strike. So first of all, can you once and for all set a precise marker in time where, according to your intelligence, Iran would cross that critical threshold in terms of its nuclear program? And secondly, can Israel really, if it deems it necessary, go at it alone, strike Iran alone, can there, it? There are three questions that you put in. One is the assumption that I put in a time limit. I didn't. I said that if Iran proceeded along the present rate of enrichment, they would reach the critical amount necessary for a bomb. They didn't cross the red line that I put at the UN, 250 kilos of uh, enriched uranium at 20%. Instead, what they did is built a lot of mounds, piles of uh, smaller and uh, lower level enriched uranium, but also built in the year since the capacity to enrich it very rapidly with uh, things like advanced uh, centrifuges. So they don't cross the line. They build a lot of uranium at lower enrichment below the line, but also built the capacity to break out very rapidly within weeks. That's the first thing. The second thing is I repeat to you what I said before. Israel will not allow Iran to achieve nuclear weapons capability. And the third thing is I'm one of the few Israelis, perhaps the last Israeli, that doesn't discuss our military options. And I don't intend to change my, my practice. But can Israel do it alone, without the help of the Americans, for instance? Yes? No? The Americans have great capacity, uh, certainly greater than anyone else. But I wouldn't cut short Israel's capacity. Last question. Um, we hear a lot from you about Iran. Little to nothing about the peace process. Shouldn't your highest priority be to make peace with your Palestinian neighbors? It's two priorities, and they're quite separate. Uh, I, I think we, we need to have a peace process with the Palestinians because we want peace. I've been at war. Believe me, peace is better than war. And we need a, a solution there. But equally, we know that uh, if we don't stop Iran from having nuclear weapons, it'll wash away the peace and all our, our existing peace treaties and the ones that we're trying to achieve with the Palestinians. It will endanger Europe. Iran is building ICBMs right now. Back to Iran. But, but yeah, but why are they... Peace process. Well, peace process what? Iran controls half the Palestinian people today. Do you know that? They control, through their proxies, Hamas and Islamic Jihad, 50% of the Palestinian people. What do you think will happen to the other 50% if Iran has nuclear weapons? What do you think will happen when Hamas operates under an Iranian nuclear But umbrella? your administration is talking to Mahmoud Abbas, who's not Hamas. Well, exactly. And how much, what do you think, how long do you think the, the, all these uh, moderate regimes will last in the Middle East when Iran has nuclear weapons? Not for very long. So if you want peace, uh, and if you want not only peace, if you want the peace not only in the Middle East, but the peace of Europe, don't let these people who are building intercontinental ballistic missiles not for us, but for you. They already have weapons that can reach out. They're building ICBMs, these uh, long-range missiles, for one purpose, to reach further into Europe and the United States. And there's only one payload that these missiles carry. That's a nuclear payload. Now, don't make the historic mistake. France, like the Jewish people, uh, was the victim of a great historic mistake of not standing up to a radical regime falling, in fact, for a, for a dupe, for a ruse. Don't do that again. Don't do it again. It happened in North Korea. It happened before in Europe. Don't do that. Stand your ground. Don't make a historic mistake. Uh, France has had a good position. And I would say to, uh, uh, to the people in government of France and to President uh, Hollande, whom I respect, vous devez rester fort, très fort. You must remain strong. Obviously, for you, Mr. Prime Minister, the Iranian uh, nuclear program, a bigger threat than the absence of uh, peace 
in the Middle East, at least in the short term. Thank you very much for your interview on France 24. We want to achieve both peace with the Palestinians and we have to stop Iran from having nuclear weapons. One does not contradict the other. Uh, in fact, uh, if we don't stop Iran from having nuclear weapons, there won't be peace in the world. Thank you very much, Mr. Prime Minister. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching the France 24 interview. Stay tuned to France 24 and stay connected to France24.com, France24.com for more news.